We've seen how cross-selling can certainly benefit your business, so much so that it would seem there aren't any drawbacks. The reality is, if done ineffectively, you can end up putting existing business at risk, possibly eroding margins on existing business lines, as well as run the risk of missing significant opportunities for new business. Let's walk through a few areas we need to be conscious of when executing our cross-selling strategy. The first potential drawback is we can come across as self-serving. Customers buy products and solutions to solve problems. And when our message comes across as selling another product and then another product versus solving a problem and then another problem, we can come across to the customer as if we are only interested in the next sale. It could be the dreaded, I got more watches effect. I just sold you a watch, but right after you agree to buy my watch, I open the other side of my coat and say, I noticed you have a second wrist. See, I've got more watches. Want to buy a different one? We joke about this effect quite often with clients, but sometimes it's how it comes across to your customers if you aren't remaining on their agenda, helping them solve one problem at a time. Drawback number two is ineffective cross-selling can potentially erode trust and loyalty with our customers. This is attached to the previous idea that we may come across as self-serving. If you're continually communicating from a transactional, next product up mentality without the knowledge, skill, and capability of navigating your customer's problems relative to your next product or service, they may potentially view their interactions with you as a win-lose scenario that will not only erode their trust of you, but limit their willingness to do business with you in the future, let alone refer you to internally or externally future customers. Drawback number three is that ineffective cross-selling can inadvertently create confusion for some of our customers. Sometimes, in our haste to move on to the next product we would like to sell to a customer, we can inadvertently muddy the water with an overload of information the customer has difficulty connecting back to the potential value it brings to them. In most B2B sales engagements, the buying cycle can be long and potentially complex. For most of our customers, buying the first product took a lot of time, energy, resources, and effort on their part. When we try to introduce a second product into the mix too soon, it can not only cause confusion, it can potentially detract from the perception of value we worked so hard to create for that first product. Drawback number four is it can potentially cost you profitability. Yes, I realized in the previous lesson on the benefits of cross-selling, we mentioned you could actually increase overall profitability. Well, the reality is, when companies have trouble articulating their value, they tend to inadvertently commoditize their products. When this happens, you unfortunately end up trying a cross-selling strategy as a way to bundle products at deeply discounted prices just to acquire the customer and beat the competition. In this case, you will erode your profits significantly, and you set the tone to this customer that you're willing and able to discount deeply on all future products as well. This never-ending cycle of commoditization all but eliminates this customer as a long-term profitable partner. Throughout the remainder of this course, we will give you strategies to combat these potential drawbacks. With the right mindset, knowledge of your customer's problems, and the appropriate timing of your cross-selling conversations, you should be able to avoid these drawbacks and maximize your impact with your customers.